even more interesting. Although it's, it's certainly a bit a bit different. So um, me too, me, me too. I found yeah. that very interesting on on the hypothalamus. So uh, do you want to talk about that one and then? Um... Okay, okay. So first of all, I need to uh, short uh, to the the audience a very short lecture on what what is called neuroendocrinology. So let me share again the screen to show you one one single uh, image to explain the public how the the hypothalamus works, okay? Can I, I do to... that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. So here we go. So this is just to provide a brief explanation of uh, how the, the hypothalamus works. So it's, uh, unfortunately, I cannot, uh, let's see, here, here we go. I want to, amplify this okay so this is better so this is the brain you see the brain here you mm -hmm. see the pointer a little hand okay mm -hmm. so this is the brain at the base of the brain here we have the hypothalamus is just the bottom of the brain and this is the, the center the control center for all automatic functions uh, automatic functions are those involuntary functions like uh, nutrition hunger um, heart frequency, respiration frequency, uh, sexual drive, and so on. So these are really, in part, involuntary. So all this is controlled by this little little region of the brain called the hypothalamus. From the hypothalamus emerge a number of uh, uh, nerves uh, that are called the autonomic um, nervous system which is not independent of of, uh, uh, of uh, our will. It's just automatic. It has our functions like uh, our heart, heart beating and so on. And also controls the release of hormones. For example, sexual hormones, which are quite important. This is something that we don't do voluntarily. So, and this is the, we focus on the reproductive role of the hypothalamus controlling a master gland, the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is here at the base. It's the master gland of the endocrine system. It controls different glands, the adrenal gland, and in our case, the ovary in the in female and the, the testes in males. But we are interested in females. And the reproductive life of females, both humans and uh, rats and mice, is very short, really. For example, um, rats live about uh, uh, three years, but they reach menopause. This is not the term used for rats, but anyway, I will just take the liberty to, to use it for the sake of understanding. Menopause uh, is achieved at uh, 10 months of age. So when the rats are, are 10 months, they stop ovulating. But the fertility even goes down be before that. It's like in women. Women uh, keep ovulating until 40, 45, and then reach menopause. But they, they, their fertility, the, the optimal time to have children is much uh, long before that is 20, 30. If you are a 35 year old woman and we can have a child, but you have to be careful to be checked because your fertility and your reproductive system is not as good as it was at 20. The same is for rats. So fertility in rats go down progressively just before menopause. In, a, in the laboratories, we retire rats from the reproductive stock at six months. So they are still are ovulating, but their fertility goes down. For example, if you place uh, 10 young rats, you made 10 young rats with males, with young males, well, 80% or 90% of the rats will get pregnant after one week in, in company of the males. But if the rats are seven months, probably 30% will be will get pregnant because their fertility went down. And the same is true, of course, for humans and for any mammal. So our hypothesis was, this was a hypothesis. If uh, the Yamanaka genes are really uh, regenerative genes, revitalizing genes, Perhaps if we inject our uh, Yamanaka, our vector expressing the Yamanaka genes 
in the hypothalamus of young rats, rat three months old, very young, is like injecting a 25 year old lady, a female, very young. They don't need really any help at that time. But we uh, hypothesized that if we injected the Yamanaka genes at that point, the regenerative action of the Yamanaka gene will slow down the decline in hypothalamic function. That is the aging process of the hypothalamus concerning reproduction. With this was what we wanted to test. If this is true, if our hypothesis was true, what we should see is that the, the decline in the fertility uh, uh, goes slowly in the treated rats that in control rats because somehow the Yamaka genes will be keeping the rats or the hypothalamus um, young or uh, delay the aging process. They will not stop the aging process, that, but they may delay because they are regenerative revitalizing genes. This was our hypothesis in my work, my not work. So we had a vector, had the rats, had everything, could just try to test it. So we injected our vector when the rats were three months old, just shortly after puberty. They are quite young. And uh, in a second group of rats, we injected a placebo vector in the, in the hypothalamus, a vector that expresses only um, a fluorescent protein, but not the Yamanaka genes, like we did before in the previous experiment. So we waited, we let the rats age until they got to nine months of age. It's just one month before menopause because they stopped uh, ovulating at 10 months. So we waited until the very end at nine months uh, to check the fertility of the rat. At that age, nine, nine months of age, we made the rat, the females, which were nine months old now, with young males. We made it the controlled animals. We made it also the treated animals. And we used also young rats that we uh, uh, had, uh, three months old, just for comparison, to compare young versus uh, premenopausal. Uh, what we found in, after this mating, we used 12 rats per group that uh, 10 of the 12 young rats were pregnant. In the case of the control old rat, that is the uh, rats that were nine months old, only one was pregnant. The other 11 were not pregnant. Clear proof that fertility declined. And in the case of the rats treated with the vector, three rats were pregnant. That is three times what people than the, than the control rats. So this was really a significant finding in our, of course, as everything else, it needs to be replicated, but the result was clearly different in the controls in the um, animals. Uh, we also um, counted the number of, of uh, babies that they have, and they had the same number of babies uh, on the average. Three babies, uh, three, four babies, in the um, in the treated rats and three babies in the control rats. So this is not a significant difference, and the weight of the babies was also similar uh, in the control and treated animals. So the only difference was really in fertility in the number of uh, rats pregnant. But this is what we wanted to check really. So this is just a, an initial result. But again. This is function. We we don't know because this was nine months after injector of the vector whether the Yamanaka genes were being expressed in the hypo hypothalamus at this time or not. But what what we know is that we got an effect, a biological effect. Uh, we would need to repeat the experiment, but this initial experiment uh, was really promising because we found what we uh, believed might happen, believe might happen, that the, the, the revitalizing capacity of the Yamanaka genes uh, could delay aging, not rejuvenate in vivo, but delay aging. And apparently in the case of the hypothalamus, it worked this way. It's just one experiment, but the experiment was positive, and so deserved to be published and deserve to be to interest other researchers to try to confirm this, maybe in mice, uh, I don't know. But this is really uh, important. 
one one thing that the 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 audience may ask is why this guy is so interested in the, the Yamanaka genes and doesn't try other um, rejuvenating substances like uh, growth hormone, for instance, to just to, to to mention anything. Well, because the Yamanaka genes were uh, developed by evolution uh, with a purpose. I mean, there is an evolutionary purpose in the Yamanaka genes. The Yamanaka genes were are present naturally in the um, ovaries or, of uh, sorry on the on the um, uh, ova of the rat on the on the oocyte. So they they are expressed. They are present there. This is why uh, animal cloning can be done. And they are rejuvenated as um, factors that are present in the in the um, oocyte and. If they are present there, probably they, they have some purpose to be present. And really, uh, recently, Dr. Geigenshev, which works also on epigenetic clocks, demonstrated that uh, the epigenetic age of embryos uh, immediately after conception goes down initially. I mean, they rejuvenate even further for a little time and then began to age. So this was an experimental confirmation of the hypothesis that the Yamanaka genes are there to do something on the on the embryo. And really, Dr. Gaidishev demonstrated that they uh, rejuvenate, uh, the, the embryo rejuvenate initially and then begins to age. But uh, this is an experimental confirmation that the, the purpose, there is a purpose in the presence of the Yamanaka genes here growth hormone, melatonin, whatever you want to mention, there is not such evidence of an evolutionary purpose. And I respect very much evolution. If evolution uh, uh, signed those genes for to rejuvenate, well, let's use those genes because these have 400 million years of evolution and trial and improvement. So this is why I, I am so interested in the Yamanaka genes and not so much in other in other substances. Right. I mean, you would think that it would create a uh, like a more balanced yeah, because if you if you put because it's not just one hormone. I'm sure there's more than one hormone. And if you put the hormones in individually, you'll have to put them all correctly yourself. Whereas if you just rejuvenate or rejuvenate or delay the time for the pituitary gland, then it would send out the right hormones at the right time and Hopefully, it would be a more balanced approach. Right. Because the Yamanaka genes know what to do. We don't mm. know. So, uh, um, handling hormones ourselves is a risky matter. You know, when the endocrinology started, uh, the researchers thought they, they, they found out that many hormones go down with aging. For example, uh, thyroid hormones go down with ages. Of course, uh, the um, testosterone goes down with age, many. So they thought, okay, if you we inject uh, testosterone or thy uh, thyroxine to a old human, we will rejuvenate it. And things were not as simple as we thought because they they did that, and what happened is that the organism became became tolerant to those high doses of thyroxine or growth hormone or any other hormone. So it's not as it wasn't as simple as just to, to just reverse aging to inject the hormones that were down because there was um, a, a refractoriness uh, the the tissue became refractory to the high doses of hormone so you needed something else and that something else is really definitely have to be looked in the at the DNA level or we now know at the epigenetic level. So it's that where we have to find and to modify things. But if you have genes that were created by nature after 400 million years of evolution, this is the time it took for these uh, molecules to evolve. And it is clear that they have a rejuvenation purpose, evolutionary purpose. Well, let's use those because they, they know how to proceed. We, they know exactly what hormones are given first, second, and third. We don't. 